JHK here for Sports Kita, and join me right now is UFC middleweight Drikas Duplessy. Drikas, thank you so much for the time, man. Where are you at? You in South Africa, right? Yeah, thank you for having me, man. Uh, I'm in South Africa. Yeah, we're leaving uh, on the 30th of June, leaving for the states. All right, for sure, man. That gives you enough time. That's a little bit, a little bit less than two weeks, right? Yeah, I mean, it's uh, we arrived uh, at the uh, in the states ten days before the fight, which is ten time zones away from south africa so it gives me enough time to climatize and make sure the body clock is working and so we can be at peak performance fight now for sure for sure man let's uh let's rewind the clock a little bit because this fight has been in the works for a long time now you guys were supposed to fight on march 20th that was almost four months ago and for the people that don't know and and to clear up some of the rumors you know what exactly ha happened ahead of the fight to where you couldn't get to the states yeah, obviously with the with the lockdown rules in South Africa being on a more strict uh, international restrictions, um, uh, we just couldn't get because I need a, a workers visa to be able to fight in the states and earn money there. And uh, I have a, a a US visa, but it's a tourist visa. It's not a, a working visa. So for me to get that visa, we needed to get the stamp. And the uh, the uh, embassy here in South Africa, the it was just to it was the timing because of the COVID. they had uh, very limited space for uh, appointments and all that and we just couldn't get the appointments they just couldn't help me in time and i mean that was two months before the fight we already wanted the appointment but it was just not possible with uh, the situation all over the world oh, for sure man for sure like i've heard other fighters too you know they were set to fight same exact situation, you know. They try to get a visa two months ahead, and and the offices are just too slow. I guess their immigration is not a quick process. Yeah, hundred percent. And I mean, it's a, uh, yeah, it's it sucks because uh, we were excited about the fight, and like we were kept we kept hoping, and they said they'll get back to us as soon as possible, and and uh, everybody tried to make it happen. We had some people, everybody the UFC, everybody tried to make this happen, and I mean, we were literally. We called the fight one almost like a week before the fight. That's when we realized there's not enough time to get the actual visa and travel uh, two days and be there in time for the fight. So, I mean, it's a, it's a bit of pull, but uh, I said when I announced that the fight's not happening, that uh, it's something bigger will come from it. And here I am, exact same opponent, which is great. Um, he's on an extra, he got another win. So that's even better, higher profile. He's on a three-fight streak. And, of course, fighting on the biggest card of the year. That's uh, can't get any bigger than that. No doubt, no doubt, man. And, uh, yeah, let's talk about that card, man. UFC 264 in Las Vegas. You fought on Fight Island in your debut. Now you get to go to Vegas, the fight capital of the world, on a Conor McGregor card. I, you know, it makes up for the, the frustration, right, a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. I mean... Uh, the kind of frustration you feel uh, going through a whole fight camp, being ready and being excited, having everybody excited to see you fight again, and then uh, the fight not happening, that's a very big disappointment, not only for me, but for the fans or the South African people who don't want to see the fight. And then something like this happens, and it's almost like you forget all about the, the frustration and the sadness that you felt when you couldn't fight the first time. This makes it all worth it. So, yeah, I mean, sometimes things do happen for a reason, and that's, I mean, couldn't work out any better for me. Anyway. The fight happened. And, and, you know, your camp, did it just continue? Did you just continue the camp or did you have to like sit back and, and take some time off and then restart the camp? Yeah, well, obviously uh, we peaked for the fight. We made sure we peaked and we were already one week into the peak week, which happens two weeks before the fight. So, I mean, you don't want to stay there for months at end until you have another fight day. So we kept on training. We, we definitely didn't uh, stop training, but uh, we had to scale down a little bit to about a 70% of the camp just to stay ready and maintain rather than keep on peaking because, you know, overtraining and overpeaking is, is a real deal. And uh, we just maintain, maintain until we heard about the next date. And uh, my agent let me know we have a, a new fight date. And then we started planning. I started building up, building up, building up. So what's great about that is uh, the, the fact that I'm building off a base of the, four, the previous camp. So I never really went out of shape. I never really went uh, complete rest mode. We stayed active. We stayed busy. We... We just maintain, maintain, and then obviously now coming into this camp, I was already fit to fight. I was already you know, ready. It was just uh, we could focus this camp on techniques, focus on a game plan, not really worry about getting into shape for a fight. That happened all by itself because we were already at 70%. Just to peak for this fight is the last couple of weeks 
the the last two weeks is when it really like just to get back to that peak and then we're ready to go so i think it just gave me more time to prepare for my opponent it gave me more time to you know, uh, the longer i have the better i be, become uh, every day i become better so i mean i got a little bit of time so i'll be even better than i would have been in the first fight from what I know about you, you're a very cerebral guy. So you're watching everything on your opponent and he got the fight, right? And he fought and he got a unanimous decision win. That's more tape to study. What did you think about the performance? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'm really happy that it could make it happen because, I mean, I couldn't make the fight. So I'm really happy for him that they got the fight because nobody wants us in the sidelines because of an opponent that can't show up. So I'm really happy. And uh, the Liche really, he, he showed up. He, he had a big fight. In my honest opinion, I thought the Lichia did enough to 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 win that fight on on the decision, but it was a very close fight. It was a it was a very close fight, and the way the way I saw the fight win go is I didn't really see a lot of change in, in Trevin's game. He's a good fighter. He has he has crisp hands. He has pretty all around game. He's strong. He's a durable guy. But uh, in that fight, I, I just confirmed whatever we already knew about the fight and the style of the fight and the way he fights. And yeah, I mean, it's uh, more reassuring to, to, I mean, getting more tapes always a, is always a, a blessing in disguise. And uh, yeah, I mean, what I, I thought uh, both the guys looked great. They both had to dig deep and the fight really could have gone either way. But uh, well done on the leash, uh, stepping up on short notice and putting up such a performance against a, against a very good opponent in Giles. And of course, in Giles to, to uh, take a fight against a completely different fighter than myself and still being able to get through that adversity of, uh, quick opponent change and still coming up the victor. Now this is the second camp. So is anything different this time around? After you know you got that more tape to study. Uh, I wouldn't say that. No, I think uh, I think uh, uh, my fight style uh, remains the same. Just getting better at what I do, and not really you know watching tape is more about just seeing constant mistakes, just seeing habits, just seeing the stuff that uh, the not really watching my opponent's fight and then creating a game plan around that, but more about just looking at the mistakes that you can uh, expose uh, when the opportunity presents itself. And uh, yeah, in that fight, we saw uh, a lot of the same Trevin that fought all the other fights. Uh, I didn't see massive improvements. I didn't see any massive changes. So, I mean, for me, for studying that tape is not about creating my game plan. My game plan is I, want, I go out there and I do stick to my strength and stick to what I want to do. And, uh, yeah, to get some extra tapes, always great. And I think uh, the fact that I got a few extra months to prepare for the same opponents is only going to benefit me tremendously. You know, you had your experience, your debut experience with the UFC. You went through the whole fight week and everything. Did anything surprise you about that whole week? And, you know, when you're heading into this fight week, are you, is there something that you could prepare yourself better for? Yeah, I think the, my fight was on an extremely short notice. I think we had 14 days or something like that to to get back, get everything ready, get the visa sorted, everything out, and get to Fight Island for the biggest moment of my life. My whole career has been getting into the UFC. And that all came so fast that, uh, you know, fighting on historic Fight Island, fighting a, a much higher-ranked opponent and on the main card, everything happened so fast. There's really a time for me to, uh, before the fight, to, to mentally prepare myself for what's coming. But, I mean, everything went perfect. Uh, the media week, the, the diet, that was the toughest part because it was short notice. But uh, yeah, I mean, the only thing now is I know what it feels like to be in the octagon, to be fighting in front of Dana White, to be on the biggest stage in the world. A dream come true for me to be able to fight in the biggest stage in the world. That's that's fast now. I remember in my first fight, I had to adapt to the situation to my opponent that he came out very aggressively and it might have seemed like I have a little um, octagon jitters, like they say. Uh, I think it might, 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 maybe even it was true. I mean, it didn't feel like I had any jitters. I just, I wasn't a lot of pressure from the get-go of the fight. And I had to uh, change my game plan because I was on the back foot immediately. So um, the, the only thing now is I'm used to the, to the octagon. I'm used to fighting in the UFC, the media, the, the professionalism that comes with it. And uh, of course, the responsibility of, of representing my country in the UFC. That pressure is always going to be there, but it's a good kind of pressure. Mm -hmm. You know, having having more time to to build it up my head uh, to to mentally train for this fight, almost if you can say it like that, to prepare yourself mentally for what's coming to walk out. But this is a new challenge altogether. Fighting in Vegas in front of a full sellout crowd, a Conor McGregor crowd, to add to that, 
Uh, I think uh, I've fought in front of big crowds before. I fought on Wembley Stadium, KSW had some massive crowds. And uh, I fought on court fight in arenas where I was the favorite, and I fought in arenas where I was by far the, the least favorite. So I think uh, my pre UFC career really, it's it, 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 all the experience in the world that, uh, that I have that set me up for this moment. And I, I really can't wait for it. To, to have all the eyes on me, the, a whole country supporting me. It's it's incredible. It's a it's a lot of pressure, but it's that that kind of pressure is for me. It's that's where I flourish. In. Get those big situations where you can almost feel the vibe. I just I flourish in those situations, and it always brings out the best in you. Yeah, in my opinion, you know the pre UFC career that you had, man, it set you up so well for the big stage compared to guys that go through the contender series. Now you. 100% finishing rate. That's very rare in this industry. You've never went to the judges. How do you see this fight playing out with Trevin Giles? Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, people go out there to see a finish, whether it comes by submission, knockout, to go, whatever. I always go out there with the mindset that I'm finishing this fight. Uh, I never take a decision off the table. It, I don't blow out my arms or go full speed and throw it all in the second round and hopefully the third round doesn't come. I'm ready for that decision if it ever had to come. But, you know, I'm, I'm out there to entertain. I'm out there to, to go put on a 100% performance. And if I give my 100% and you can keep up, then uh, we're going to have a great fight. But if I give my 100% and you don't, I mean, I'm going to finish you. The first opportunity I get, I finish you. A lot of people don't. They say you shouldn't look for that finish, but I don't believe in that. I believe you do look for that finish as soon as the opportunity presents itself because you might only get one chance to finish that fight. And, you know, going to a judge's decision is always a, it's almost like a, a flip of a coin. We've seen some crazy decisions in the past and I don't ever want to be a victim of that and feel I didn't leave it all in the cage, feel that, um, I mean, I think I won the fight, but on decisions I didn't. So it's just, it's not always possible for a lot of guys. I understand that, but for as long as I have any power about it, I'm going to get that. I'm getting that finish and I don't see this fight playing out any differently. I fought, um, I fought Marcus Perez, who's never been finished. So that was a big, big statement for me. Because before the fight, I said it, he's never been finished enough, never not finished a fight. So it's going to be almost a, a very fan-friendly fight to see, can I keep my finishing streak and can he keep his uh, unfinished streak? And I mean, I went out there and I got I got the knockout in the first round. It was amazing. And I honestly feel that this fight won't be any different. I mean, Trevin is, a, is an amazing opponent, but I honestly mm -hmm. believe that I have all the tools in all areas of MMA to, to finish this fight. With, you know, Africa just being on the map, you know what I mean, in the MMA world, it's just everybody's focused on, like, when is Africa going to have a show? And I feel like if they do have a show, there's not many locations, and South Africa would probably be on the top of the list. What is the restrictions like right there? It seems like they've relaxed it somewhat in the last couple of months. Yeah, absolutely. They did. Uh, if they do a show in Africa, I don't really see another country than South Africa being able to uh, I just think it's the best country. I think it's the the, the leader in, in MMA. It's, uh, it's the biggest organization in Africa, and the people we are very accustomed to MMA. So I think it will be great to have it in Africa, in South Africa, and well, that will be absolutely amazing for me to be able to fight in a home country on the first UFC card in Africa. But uh, restrictions right now, we are pretty strict. We just moved up a level again. You know, winter just started, so, I mean, the cases increased a little. Uh, we have curfew, but it was pretty... The, they, they released some of the restrictions quite a bit and then um, the cases started rising again. So they, they upped the restrictions a little with the curfew, um, with the public events, all that. So right now for, for this year, um, I think South Africa is still a little bit on the restricted side with only being able to take a certain capacity of people inside and outside. But uh, hopefully by uh, 2022, this whole thing will be sorted out and we can go on with life as we know it used to know it at least and uh put on a, an amazing show and sell out a massive arena here in south africa yeah i see that happening man hopefully as early as 2022 jerkus thank you so much man for the time have a great flight to vegas and uh good luck on the fight man and hopefully we get uh many of these throughout your ufc career thank you so much i really appreciate it cool man have a good one